Hello students, in today's class we are going to learn about solid waste management. Okay, so I have a newspaper here. Okay, and uh, once I am finished reading this newspaper, I will be crushing it and throwing it outside. So what have I done? I have generated solid waste. Okay, so solid waste generation is one of the biggest problems, and even an even bigger problem is the handling of solid waste. You see, like in other kinds of environmental pollution. You cannot prevent or control the generation of solid waste. You can only manage the solid waste. And that is why you often refer to this as solid waste management. So what happens after you generate this solid waste? So once you generate the solid waste, you are going to put it in the dustbin or the uh, ground. And somebody has to collect it after you. And once they collect it, that process is called collection. And once it is collected, it becomes the responsibility of the civic bodies to collect and then transport it to the common place of solid waste management. But uh, even before transportation, they will have to segregate the waste into biodegradable. For example, this paper is biodegradable, but plastic is not so biodegradable. It is non-biodegradable material. And so you will have to segregate it into biodegradable and non-biodegradable. You have to transport that waste. And finally, you have to dispose the waste. So what are the steps? Number one, generation of solid waste. Number two, collection of the solid waste. Number three, segregation of that solid waste. Number four, transportation. Now you can either transport it before segregation or after segregation. Okay. And number five is the final disposal of the solid waste. Now, how do people dispose of solid waste at the very end of the chain? Generally, solid waste is disposed in landfills, which are large areas of land, which are generally not used for any other purpose but for dumping of solid waste. And this is the biggest problem. The landfill cannot be placed near the location where you live. Imagine having a landfill just behind your house. The smell will be horrible. But land availability is becoming lower and lower. And our waste generated is becoming higher and higher and these are the biggest challenges for solid waste management. So landfill is one method. The other method is that you will often see that when you go near a landfill you will be seeing smoke, they will be burning the waste. So incineration, controlled burning of waste either in an incinerator or outside by setting things on fire. That is one way to reduce the volume of the solid waste and convert it into ash. After incineration and landfill, the third method is much more eco-friendly and that is composting. What you do is you arrange the biodegradable solid waste in piles. You allow the activity of thermophilic microorganisms to act on it. And eventually over time, you turn it. You keep turning it over time. And eventually after some time, the biodegradable material will compress and because of microbial activity, they will get converted into compost. And compost is an organically enriched concentrated material that you can use as a soil additive for the effective growth of plants. So it is like a fertilizer, but not exactly. It's more of an amendment to the soil to make it much more easy for the availability of nutrients. So these are the basic things in solid waste management and solid waste management is not an easy joke. Sometimes it becomes important to assess whether it is possible to obtain energy from the solid waste management sites. For example, methane can be recovered from landfills. So one of the most important mantras for solid waste management is the 3 R principle. Reduce, reuse and recycle. See first of all we have to reduce the generation of solid waste. In the beginning I should crush the newspaper. I should not have done it. I should have read the newspaper and instead of crushing it, I should have folded it neatly, arranged it in my house and I can do one of three things. I can either reduce the use of newspaper by switching over to digital media and even if I do use the newspaper, I can reuse the newspaper for other purposes such as packing things 
or uh, maybe I can uh, collect them and sell it to the uh, recycling unit and get some money in turn. Okay, that is reuse. Or I can recycle the newspaper. I can take the newspaper and put it to recycling and get fresh paper. Okay. So the difference between reuse and recycle should be very very clear for you. Reuse is where you take something, a waste material and you make use of it for some other purpose. That is reuse. But recycle is where you take that material, waste material, you destroy it completely and then you reassemble it. Or you reconstitute it from its original concentration and then you make something new out of it. So that is recycling. So the three R principle is one way in which you can manage solid waste management. Another way is called as source reduction. And this is the first part of the three R principle, reduce. So if you are able to reduce the generation of solid waste in the first place, then that is the perfect solution to solid waste management. Because you see, we cannot prevent the generation of solid waste. And solid waste is not just newspaper. It is so many things. When you eat a bag of chips, when you buy something from the shop, you are invariably contributing to solid waste. So there is absolutely no way in which we can completely avoid the generation of solid waste. It is not possible. And I have not even spoken about the solid waste generated from our bodies. That is an even bigger problem. If you allow solid waste to proliferate, then that may lead to several diseases. Another important aspect of solid waste management is segregation at source. This is one way in which solid waste can be managed. Instead of segregating the solid waste at the centralized civic bodies facilities, it would be better and easier if the solid waste were segregated into biodegradable and non-degradable right at your house itself. So that you can yourself compost your biodegradable waste and generate enough compost soil additive for your own garden. And the non-biodegradable waste will be easily segregated by the civic bodies. So source reduction and segregation at source. These two steps are very very important. And they both form part of the 3R principle of solid waste management. So let me revise everything once again for you. Solid waste can be defined or differentiated into two major types. Biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Solid waste cannot be prevented or controlled. You can only manage the solid waste, which is why we call it as solid waste management. And uh, please do not assume that solid waste is just generated only in uh, cities. It is also generated in villages. It is generated in agriculture sites. Agro waste, we call it as. And it is also generated in industries, much more than we would think, which is comfortable. And this solid waste Management steps involves the generation of solid waste, the collection of solid waste, the segregation of solid waste, the transportation and finally the disposal. And there are three methods, fundamental methods of disposal. One is to dispose them in landfills. The second is to incinerate them to reduce the volume of the solid waste. And the third is to subject them to the process of composting which is only possible for biodegradable waste materials. Finally, there is the 3R principle which helps us to reduce the incidence of solid waste. The three R's stand for reduce, reuse and recycle. And two very good methods of reducing the generation of solid waste is to reduce the incidence of solid waste in the first place which is source reduction and segregation at source which is Rather than making the task of segregation the responsibility of the civic bodies, you segregate your own waste so that it becomes easier at the end for them. Thank you and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more of videos on environmental science. Thank you.